Hawks represent all my island people say We people celebrating only from my homeland Like my old man say there's nothing impossible So we have to bring this message to my brother Lyrical Straight from the crew out to the blue We represent the voices of my ancestors calling And I was getting more than my culture is falling Now we have a step up for the past when it's calling What's that? No one can stop, ain't nobody gonna stop us People, everybody, would you listen to us for a start? No boy complaining and that's we partaking We represent the fall Previously on Delos, we hiked across Interview Island in search of wild elephants, hung out with the local park rangers, and sailed through some seriously shallow waters back to Port Blair. Because us girls are like <laughs> so standing sitting like this, so that was the second lap. So I think they're probably gonna come back again. Um, very strange behavior from the Navy uh, helicopter, yeah. but this is India, so you can expect anything. We just arrived back to Port Blair and anchored just outside the main harbor at Ross Island. Ross Island was the administrative center for the British forces, right up until the Japanese evaded in World War II. So, seven visitors, one video camera, and one still camera. Now it's a major tourist attraction for day trippers from Port Blair. Oh, uh, oh yeah. Thank you, sir. Would you like to get an ice cream for 20 rupees? I would love to. Good. Okay. Creamy, like butterscotchy kind of toffee, milk, sugar. It's delicious. It always gives me chills to see rooms like this. It's sort of like when we're wreck diving. I imagine what this place was like a few hundred years ago, with people living their everyday lives perched on this little island in what was then one of the most remote outposts of the British Empire. It was super fancy for the time, sporting luxurious accommodations and modern comforts. British officers lucky enough to be stationed here referred to it as the Paris of the East. Look at nature just fucking destroying shit. Oh, nature's gonna just take it back real quick. Like these, these buildings were first built late late 1700, so 200 years, and this is like already demolished by trees and shit. Imagine 500 years from now, which is nothing. Ross Island was reclaimed by the Allied forces in 1945, but no one's lived here since, except for the animals, and of course, the caretakers. We were starving after a Ross Island adventure, so we jumped in Maggie for the ride to good old Port Blair across the bay. Butter chicken and garlic and naan. Garlic naan, some King rice, Fisher. kingfishers. Garlic. And that's when this random dude named Santosh pulled up a chair and started showing us pictures on his phone of sweet beaches and killer fishing. Our last week in India was gonna be a good one. We just got into the Aberdeen jetty and it's super busy, all the tourists going over to Ross Island today, but we got the dinghy sorted out. And the mission is to find good internet. <laughs> Again. We needed internet for two pretty important reasons. We were preparing to set sail, and our next destination was Cocos Keeling, which is actually part of Australia. They require a visa in advance, so we needed to get online. Secondly, we were desperately behind on uploading our latest Delos video. If we couldn't upload it before setting sail, it could be months before we'd have internet again. And our new friend Santosh said he had the fastest internet in the land. 
really hoping that he takes us to the car park and has like a sweet minivan it's like air conditioned and <laughs> he's like come with me and then we go to this real nice place and he offers us beer and ice cream <laughs> we've got super fast internet that would be <laughs> but we don't know we don't know what's with, going on we're gonna with anything. well not exactly what Yoshirama had in mind but we are definitely maybe making progress. The saddle is a temporary Wi-Fi hotspot in the bus stop <laughs> in the shade. <laughs> we were trying to get our trying to get our shit worked out. Ooh. Ooh, Net City. Cyber zone. High speed. AC. Our bus stop Wi-Fi idea was a pretty epic failure. And we were already on plan B, the fastest internet cafe in all of Port Blair. Very good. Your internet hole. Yeah, I just got the first visa done okay. after like one hour of trials and fails and trials. So we're in the internet cafe and our friend Santosh here got us pizza delivery. Nice chicken with olives and onion. It's a goodness. Two dollars. So how do we do? Oh man, that internet took all the energy out of me. It took like five hours to get done we got about energy. 15 minutes of work i think so 20 minutes of work very fast hey very fast very fast <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. very fast oh and the delos video well we gave up on that one with the upload time topping seven days our chances of success were pretty slim so it was on to plan c a cheapo usb snail mailed to a friend in the usa FedEx had been deserted for who knows how long. I'd never heard of Blue Dart, but Santos said they were pretty cool. We handed over our precious USB and crossed our fingers. Five days later, the package arrived safe and sound in California, where it took only 15 minutes to upload. Only in the Andaman Islands, land of bureaucracy and faxing, would international snail mail to America be faster than the internet. Oh, it's good music, man. Our month-long circumnavigation of the Andamans had drained our diesel. Our mission was to top up the tanks before the big sail to Cocos Keeling. But here in India, nothing is simple. There is a labor strike, so we couldn't get any fuel delivered. To make matters worse, the pesky custom guys wanted to charge us extra tax on any fuel we purchased. So we made some under-the-table arrangements to get things sorted after dark. So it turns out that there's not only a labor strike today, but what we're doing is kind of like under the radar from customs. So we have to do this kind of in the evening, after dark, sneak in, get the fuel out of the back of the truck, and then get out. So. I don't know what's going on. I'm not sure if the fuel's here actually. I, we just dropped the tanks in the in the back of the car, so. You guys wanna go for a ride? Yeah, okay, let's go. There must be some sort of miscommunication. So we are off to the station to sort it out on our own. So this is exactly where we were like eight hours ago. We're just in a different truck now. We have a massive 210 liter drum that there's no way we can carry. And uh, so we're gonna try and figure out a way to get this off and then back to Delos somehow, which I think is gonna ultimately involve a lot of siphoning because nobody has a pump either. There's talk of tires. There's a talk of a tire involved, so we're gonna have to see how that goes. <laughs> Here he comes, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the captain of Dallas, Mr. Rez. 100 rupees only. Look all this here. So we've got that tires. heavy, heavy thing right there. Yeah, we've it's going to be interesting, I think. We've got some tires. Yeah. And uh, we're going to get it off the back of the truck. It's about 450 pounds. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. One, two, three, wait, go! Okay, it's easy. 
I'm rolling it off the back. I think just slide it like that. It's, <laughs> it's kind of a good account, you know? It's a heavy one. So you can yeah. chew. Here you go. What what you go, go yeah, it's fine. Okay, it's fine. Woo! Oh, oh, nice. Piece of cake, man. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, go okay, drop me down. Yeah, man, the boat will be topped up. It's full, and we'll have a few extra jerry cans that we can store away. And hopefully, we won't have to get fuel for another three or four months. So we started at 9 this morning, and what time is it now? Does anybody know? 9.30? No, 9.30. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 12 and a half hours. 9.40. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Had a good, a good moment of clarity when we rode past the Gandhi statue in the center of town in the back of a truck with a barrel of 200 liters of fuel in it. <laughs> okay, cruising. We are right up at the top. 580 liters. Woohoo! Beautiful. Oh, we gotta go get 20 more. <laughs> <laughs> We're out. With uh, Sam too, she's gonna take us around town because it's girl, Sam town, girl, Sam town. We're gonna get some fabrics, some stuff that we can make things out of, like silver chains and all that kind of fun things, and then we're gonna go for the last provisioning in India. Crazy. It was like a store the size of a shoebox and there was like 20 people and they're all crammed in there trying to fucking buy this and buy that and two meters of this and five meters of that and oh I have a big bag full of goodies and it was only the equivalent of like $20 so super cheap. Bargain. We're happy. Man, that was crazy. <laughs> we bought the whole store. Okay. <laughs> it's just getting dark now and we've just finished our day of missions. We didn't think it would take this long, but here we are. <laughs> Crazy. I know. We're all sweaty and exhausted and we're just like, we can't wait to get the boat, dump all the stuff, have a nap, have a shower, get your glams on for the wedding and then we're just going to go and woohoo! It's been a great day. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. It's awesome but really warm. Wedding? What you talking about, Frida? No, okay, okay. Just don't let him He's calling out to us. My friends are coming, but we can't come. Look, I'm sorry. Give to me, give to me, Lelia. Ah, give to me, Lelia. Look, give to me, Lelia. Ah. ठीक है ना हाँ हम लोग आ जाएगा हम लोग आ जाएगा बताओ मेरे को हम इधर ही हैं I asked Santosh if there will be an Indian wedding the next few days and he said yes there will be tonight one o'clock because um, the spiritual man told the couple that one o'clock will um, that's when the wedding will start so we're going there tonight and there will be like three four hundred people we're gonna wear the saris and we're gonna go with him and we're gonna shake it. And we got, we're gonna bring a gift as well. <laughs> Free is so excited. Finally. <laughs> Let's pick, pick the phone. Are you gonna bring your camera? Yes, I'm gonna bring my camera. I'm gonna do everything. I'll just be like, don't just put your glamours on. <laughs> put your damn on me. Put your glamours on. Got on my finest tie pants. My cleanest shirt. Excellent. With only a few stains. Mm. I've not showered, but I gave up on that long ago. So we just arrived here. That's the wedding entrance. Um, I think. Yeah, I, we don't know. We have no idea what to expect, but it, we're very right, excited. It looks kind of like a, I don't know, four or five year old birthday to me. Yeah. But it's going to be sweet. Yeah. I've got my Indian wedding party mix. <laughs> 
Found the other half of the group. Yes, my friends. Oh, oh, this really? one. Hi. Hello, sir. How are you? Hi. 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 About to walk into some, I don't know what, but let's go check it out. They got a car? Yeah, they, they maybe gifted it because it's a new one. <laughs> Never seen anything like this before. <laughs> something fell down and it went all black. I don't think it's, it's something wrong with electricity or something. But Santush said before that we that we have to stay low so we don't curse this wedding. So we're a bit scared that people are going to think this is our fault. Literally like one minute ago. Yeah. The boys just left for the bar and we're not allowed to go because only the boys are allowed in the bar. Only men are allowed in the bar. So us girls are staying here and then literally they just left a minute ago and then this fucking massive chandelier or something <laughs> fell from the fucking ceiling and shattered and all the fucking power went out. We just sat here like, oh my god. All the guys are working with their cell phones out and they are all got this massive ladder right now up to the ceiling. Fixing the walls. Yeah. 
We asked Santosh why none of the guests hung around. It was pretty much give your gift, take a picture, eat, and then bolt. He said the less time you spend here, the less chance you have to do something stupid and curse the marriage. So Indians, especially on the bride side, gotta dodge ASAP. Say pick up the pick them up anchor. I should say that. Yeah, you gotta yell the pick them up anchor. Pick up the anchor. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Captain, picking up the anchor, sir. And then they're gonna tell you. Okay. Which way to drive the boat? Okay, so now we need to go forward. Okay. So we're take, gonna take this lever and just push it forward until it engages. Okay. There you go. Okay, and you say forward. Okay. Yell it to them so they know. Forward. Like a dream? Yeah, it's like a dream, really. <laughs> okay, the anchor's up. Okay. Santosh had done so much for us over the last week. We decided the least we could do was take him for a ride around the bay. King of the world out there. <laughs> he awesome. seems to be enjoying it, isn't it? Yeah, it's awesome. What's the mission, bro? Well, we've, uh, since Santosh has been such an awesome dude for us the past week, we've uh, gifted him one of our spear guns on board. And uh, the mission is to get it to his house, so we've wrapped it in this towel. And under the cover of darkness, we're gonna take a ferry across the channel to his house. And he, he doesn't want to hold it because, I don't know, he feels people will ask what it is. But if I hold it, apparently they won't ask. <laughs> So. <laughs> That's normal. <laughs> Where are we going? Yeah. We are going for Bamboo Flood. Okay. The first Indian ferry you are boarding, isn't it? Yes. Okay. It's a good view, bro. Got a bunch of bikes coming in. Okay, let me tell you first of all, it would be crowded. Yes. They're gonna talk a shit. Okay. You don't have it concentrated on them. We have just have to look our beer, get the beer, and that's it. Okay, is it okay if I film? Yeah, it's okay. Yes. yes. English yes. or Hindi? Yes. You can go. Thank you, sir. I told you. Yes. It's okay for me. This is a bachelor alcoholic club, BAC for short, strictly men only. It's basically just a bunch of dudes getting wasted before heading home. Okay, close it down. Okay. Yeah. Success! <laughs> it's a kind of nice, isn't it? Yeah. Meanwhile, we're chatting it up with the super drunk guys that had just stumbled past Brady on the stairs. Facebook.com. SV Delos. I will go. And then you will find us. Okay. Do you have a card? Yes. Oh, so we just, they just came up to us. They were like, oh, hi, where are you Very from? Nice, Who are you? Uh, and Brian said he's from America. And oh, we want to go to America. We don't want to go there. Yeah. Well, we wanted these tails and they're swapping cards. Okay. And he showed a picture so of his wife. <laughs> this guy walking down the stairs as I was going into the bar. Yeah. This is he my stopped card. me and oh, said, this is my card. Oh, Are you nice. Hindi, yes. English, right. or American? Yeah. Yeah. He said, oh, I'm That's American, sir. I said, can do anything. Thank God, God, because if you were the others, I would not let you pass. <laughs> 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 and then stumbled down the stairs and fell into the wall. So <laughs> 4K Sony. Only yes. 4K. Yes. No, 4K Sony. 2160 resolution. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. How do you know the 4K Sony? Yeah. Okay. FDX. And that's when shit got weird. 
Santosh got a call and disappeared. Then the driver turned around and headed back towards the ferry jetty. So the the car told me to get in, and uh, I wouldn't know where Santosh is, but we pulled up at the police station. And they asked us to go in there. And they asked us to go inside, and we said no. But yeah, there's a lot of people just standing around looking. Yeah, like as soon as you stop, you always have people around you for. Well, at least we're we're leaving the police station now. I don't know what just. Happened. I don't know what just happened. But we're driving. They were asking why. What are, happened? They said the, why you were taking foreigners to the home. I said they're gonna get back by 8:30. Yeah. Oh, okay. They said you can't keep it at home. So I'm not keeping them at my home. They're going back to so the. So they home. they don't want us to stay at your house. Yeah. Oh, okay. So who called you? The police inspector in charge of that. <laughs> I don't fight from anyone, which I told you. I said, what the hell is that? Just our presence here as foreigners on the other side of the bay had created a stir. Someone called the police, the police called our driver, and the next thing, we were at the police station. The whole concept of being watched and not allowed to travel freely was completely foreign to us. Come on, everybody. This is Santos Darka's home. Careful, the spear gun's caught on the electrical wire. Mission successful. Spear gun entering. Santosh's home. What's my name? Where's five thousand? It's super, super strong beer. On our way home, we said hello to the police inspector. He was cool and just doing his job, but I'm sure really glad to see us on our way back to Delos. Apparently it's not cool for us to be here, and when we got here it caused some commotion, some calls were made, caused some stress, and when we leave we have to check out with the police post to let them know that we were leaving and going back to Port Blair. So we've done that, we shook hands, we smiled, and now we're out. <laughs> so let's go before we get arrested. Well, just as you guys walked into the police station, I looked up at this balcony and there was like these two kids like going at each other, man. Like just fighting, like fist flying. Oh, it just made me really sad, you know? After hearing all of Santosh's story and everything that he's been feeling and just the feeling of wanting to escape and, you know, the kind of pressures of society here are so intense. It kind of puts things into perspective, you know? It's kind of one of those fuck moments. It's time to check out of the Andaman, so we've got all of our paperwork sorted out and we're going to head in and grab the last bit of veggies and see all the officials and then start sailing. We really don't know where we're going though, I mean we're going south towards Cocos Gili. Could take a week, could take two weeks, could take three weeks, but at least we'll be away from land for a while. So I'm very ready to go sailing. So, we're leaving, we've got to put our iridium back in the cabinet where custom sealed it up. So we took the battery out. Good thing we have somebody with a tiny Swedish arm. I don't think they'll even 
open it, they'll probably just check to see if the seal's broken, but... Great success! It was our last day, and like Brady said, we were ready to be on the ocean for a while. Checking out went super smooth. Even the customs dudes completely forgot about our iridium and just handed over the outward clearance. The only hitch was with port control, and they were being a bunch of dicks. Earlier that day, Santosh had come out to say his goodbyes. He even brought us takeaway butter chicken from our favorite restaurant as a little going away gift. Port control somehow found out about it and went so far as to accuse Santosh of trying to smuggle things out of the country. Both Santosh and I had to sign a statement saying it was in fact only butter chicken and not a bomb or anything. Crazy. We waited out the bureaucracy, and pretty soon, only immigration was left before we were officially cleared. This is the final step. We've got the gentleman for immigration here. <laughs> and as soon as they stamp our passports, then we are free to go and sail to Australia. <laughs> what do you say, guys? All is good? All is well? <laughs> All is well. All is well. Yes. He's just trying to find us on Facebook first. <laughs> it's like a portable immigration office. Yes. Up next, we set sail for Cocos Keeling, cross the equator, and encounter some of the biggest seas we've ever experienced in the southern Indian Ocean. was made. I can't, because I can't keep fucking reading the sign. <laughs> the resident Indians of the island. <laughs> I can't fucking read it. <laughs> You're standing in the way. These jewels, these <laughs> Ross Island, so very different from the Indian name islands. Like Utupu in Anana. Like Utupu <laughs> Island. <laughs> Here, like the red, um, dark red paint. 